With the Shadow of the Erd Tree right around the corner, it's time to look back at Elden Ring and see if it's as good as it was hyped up during its launch. I finished this game about last year, around a year and a half after release, and it took 120 hours of my shitty life. And it sounds like I'm complaining, but I'm not. Kinda. But the game is humongous. The older Souls games are equivalent to the amount of calories that you'd normally eat during a bulk, and then Elden Ring is equivalent to what EDP would eat on a cut. That is a massive difference on the scale. And to some people, that's a good thing, but to others, it's just like bruh. Now, depending on the game, I would like it if it was as long as Elden Ring, but it's very rare. The game would have to have a story that's constantly grabbing me with the amount of grip strength that Brian Shaw would have, and the gameplay would have to have the same effect that vapes have on teenagers. But no one's playing these games for the story, cause that's just something you YouTube after you finish the game, cause you have no idea as to what the fuck just happened. As for the gameplay, it's fun, but it didn't hook me for over 100 hours. I spent a total of 123 hours, and I did as much as I could. I'm pretty sure I hit every single boss including all the mini bosses and everything, cause I'm a completionist that has a self harm fetish. But I constantly took breaks while playing this game, and played a bunch of other games in between, cause of me getting burnt out with the amount of content in the game. There are over 200 bosses, with 112 of them being unique. And and that is a lot of unique bosses, but every time you fight the same boss again, it takes away from the experience of fighting that boss for the first time. Not so much for bosses you fight twice like Estelle, but more so for bosses like the variations of the Crucible Knights, Foreskin Duos, and all the other bosses you see so often. And the worst ones are the Dragons, Tree Sentinels, Erdtree Avatars, and all the other bullshit repeat bosses. I lost count of how many of these bosses I fought, and these bosses only became more of a chore after fighting so many of them already. It's kinda like going to a concert. The more concerts you go to, the less you're gonna remember from each concert, just like the boss fights. The most memorable boss fights for me were the boss I only fought once. Radon, Renala, Rightguard, Fire Giant, Dragonlord, Placid Dusax, Malekith, Jideon, Millennia, and Radagon were the only true unique bosses that you don't fight multiple times, and they were some of the most memorable. Other than Gideon, that guy was annoying as shit. But once I unlocked Mimic about two thirds into the game, I ended up using it for almost every single boss just so I can get it over with and speed through the game. And sometimes I just cheese a boss just because of how many times I already beat it, like this annoying ass Ice Dragon. If I wasn't able to cheese these bosses, I would have had a worse time playing these games cause it would just feel like a chore. But this is straight up way too many bosses. Bloodborne and Dark Souls 3 only had 17 and 19 respectively, with all of them being unique in Bloodborne and one boss being repeated in Dark Souls 3 which was Udix Gundir. But it was fine in Dark Souls 3 because you can clearly tell the difference. Champion Gundir was way faster and aggressive and he was only repeated once in the entirety of the game. In this game, you would need to point a gun to my head to make me remember what the difference was in the repeated bosses. Cause there are so many of them to remember that you end up forgetting what was different. Like I actually don't know what the difference is between the three godskin apostles. I just know I fought one near the windmills, another in Kaelid, and another in the duo fight. And there was also probably one in the dungeon as well. But my point is that having all these boss fights repeated does nothing but ruin the overall experience of the game and it would have been more memorable if you had just fought each boss once. Cause again, you'd end up spending over 100 hours on average beating everything in the game. It took me around 70 hours to Platinum Bloodborne where I played the game 3 times and fought all the Chalice Dungeon bosses. This was almost double that on one playthrough. So if the game was maybe 10, 20, 40, 60% shorter, I would have had a better time. Just get rid of the repeated bosses cause it also brings up another issue and that's the exploration. Now I think exploring the lands between is fine, I don't really have much of an issue with it other than getting burnt out after trying to find half the bosses as I said in my original video. Most of it is pretty sick, especially finding the underground world cause that could easily be missed and it has a good amount of bosses. But exploring through the dungeons brings out another similar issue to the bosses where it's just so many. Trying to solve the dungeon puzzles is only fun for so long before it starts feeling like a chore. To make it even worse, it might be a boss you fought already or some sort of similar variation. And on top of that, the reward you get might be absolutely useless for your build. So removing a huge portion of these would have helped it out as well. And to make it even worse, like what Dunkey and so many other YouTubers have said, no one showed up to work to balance the game. Some of these bosses are just bosses you can defeat in seconds, and that's not even an exaggeration. You'd probably put more time into finding the solution to the puzzle that lets you fight the boss, than actually fighting the boss. And more importantly, you'd end up putting way less effort when it comes to defeating it. And then when you look at the end game passing the mountaintops of giants, the difficulty jump is just insane. Some of them don't even feel fair, with the biggest one being Millennia. The waterfall dance is the hardest move to dodge in the entire game, and arguably in all of From Software's catalog, and the entire combo can disintegrate you. And that's not even the crazy part. She heals every single time she hits you, so you get destroyed, and she gets back to max health. And that's only the first phase. 
Once you do beat her, you get a shit ton of souls, which is cool, but you also get a great rune. I knew that this was the healing mechanic from Bloodborne, and I was so ready to use it, but I only had one boss left, which was Radagon, and I found out you heal less from your flask. This was definitely the most disappointing moment in the entire game for me, because I waited over 100 hours for this, and fought the hardest boss in all of From Software's games to get a disappointing ass ability. Millennia did not feel fair, and in turn did not make the fight seem satisfying unlike Malekith, where his attacks were brutal, but his moves were able to be dodged with practice, which made landing that final hit be satisfying as hell. Now I know that you can dodge the waterfall dance, but I did not have enough time to practice that. It's definitely the hardest move to dodge in all of the From Software games I've played, and I just said fuck it, I'll just use a mimic and beat her ass. And I did. But sadly, I can't say that most bosses in Elden Ring had the level of satisfaction that I did with Malekith or the Nameless King, as a lot of them felt too aggressive to be fair, or were too easy to be satisfying. And only a few of them were just annoying. So that whole thing about From Software games being hard, but fair, only applied to a couple of bosses in this game. But with that being said, there is something that solved these issues to me and made the game more enjoyable and i did not expect it to and that's the summons and more specifically mimic want to quickly get rid of a boss you fought 50 times already just speed it up with a mimic is a boss just pissing you off and feels unfair just use a mimic to balance it out is a boss just straight up fucking annoying and is a reincarnation of skylar white Use a Mimic, and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying this video so far. It even makes the game easier for people who find the bosses challenging. I used it for some bosses that were hella tough as well, even if it seemed like a fair fight, just because I wanted to finish the game at one point. Like with the final boss, Radagon. Though Mimics do make the game more enjoyable, I still think they should have made the bosses more balanced, and just reduced the number of bosses by a substantial amount. Now with all that being said, I still enjoyed the game, but nowhere near the amount compared to most people cause I think it's far from a 10 out of 10 game for the reasons I mentioned. I pretty much agree with everything else that most people would say, like with the world being majestic and jaw dropping to explore, at least until I'm not burnt out of the area. But Noxtella and the whole underground portion of the map has some of the coolest atmosphere in all of the Souls games I've played, and it's just beautiful. Minus the Lake of Rot. These guys need to get rid of the cesspool lakes and I don't know why they keep having them in every game when there's not a single soul that asks. But on top of the world, there's a bunch of fun and cool weapons to use. I started off with the Uchi, but then I switched to the Death's Poker halfway through, and then tried Moonveil for the last two bosses. Now, Moonveil and Uchi are pretty similar, but there's a bunch of other weapons to try out and experiment with, and the game is more fun to play when trying out different weapons and builds. One complaint that I hear that I don't entirely agree with, is that you end up being forced to use one or two weapons, when that isn't really the case. Cause I managed to find a bunch of ancient smithing stones, and I managed to fully upgrade a good amount of weapons. The issue I'd say is not being able to try out other builds unless you go through a rebirth. I've only rebirthed once in the entire game so I can fight Millennia, but outside of that, I haven't tried other builds. It just wasn't something that I ended up doing, but it is something that I would have done to make the game more interesting and to try out different weapons. I wanted to try all the legendary weapons, but I just couldn't because I didn't have the right stats, and if I wanted to rebirth, I didn't know what weapon to base my build on, nor was willing to take the risk and settle for that build. So, I'm just like fuck it, I'll just stick to this cool ass ice weapon cause it's the most unique weapon I'm compatible with that I haven't seen in other souls games. So I do understand that part of the complaint. But this is where there's an issue with the game being an RPG comes into play, where it's hard for you to try out different weapons cause of being stuck to one build. Normally in From Software games, it makes sense to respec on different playthroughs, but in this game, one complete playthrough is equivalent to multiple playthroughs in other games. So it's best to respec throughout the game to make things more interesting. But if you are willing to play multiple multiple playthroughs, then by all means go ahead. I personally would rather try out other games that I haven't played already, than replay games I've already played multiple times. But yeah, everything else that the game has to offer is good. I did all three of the main endings by uploading my save files to platinum the game, but I didn't platinum the game because my trophies didn't transfer. I technically did platinum the game because I beat every single boss and collected the main items, but it's just split between PS4 and PS5 trophies. I'm kind of surprised to see over 10% of people platinumed it, considering how massive the game is. It's the highest of any Souls games. Anyways, I also didn't put a spoiler up for the ending over here, because there's no way to spoil it, because you'll have no idea what any of this means, unless you already watched the Vati video video. But I like how the games are like the original Call of Duty Zombies games where they just put you in the game and say nothing else. And the community comes together to try and piece together the story, which I always like. Now, I love From Software games. Bloodborne is one of my favorite games of all time, and Dark Souls 3 was a great game to play afterwards. But unfortunately, this is probably my least favorite From Software game for the reasons I mentioned. So, I do think it is overrated. But with that being said, I still enjoyed the game, and I think it's a good game. 
I've been a fan of From Software games ever since 2019, when I first played Bloodborne, where I played Dark Souls 3 shortly after. But it is important to point out flaws so these developers know what we like and what we don't like, so that they can possibly avoid it for their next game. For me, the game is just too big, and I don't really get much of the hard but fair feeling in this game, like I did with Dark Souls 3 and Bloodborne. Most of it just felt like, damn, that was easy, or damn, that was bullshit. Mimic. Though summons did help, there still should have been more time put into balancing the bosses, as the most memorable boss in my opinion was Malekith. I do plan on playing Demon Souls in the future, but I finished Sekiro, and I will say, I had a much better experience with that game. I won't be playing Dark Souls 1 and 2 because I only hear terrible things from Dark Souls 2, and I think Dark Souls 1 is just too old for me. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and join the 2% of everyone subscribed to the channel, cause this game took so much time to finish, and I really wanted to make a video and talk about everything I wanted to, and I still haven't touched this game that I bought. Literally one of the very few games that I bought right before launch. So yeah, it would mean a lot. If you want to check out some top 5s of the bosses and see my opinion on that, then check out the shorts that I made, and check out this video over here if you want to see my initial thoughts. And let me know what you guys think in the comments, as I'll be reading them from time to time. But that's about it.